He took out his wand and gave a great sweeping wave with it. At once, all the candles except those inside the carved pumpkins were extinguished, plunging them into a state of semi-darkness. The goblet of fire now shone more brightly than anything in the whole hall, the sparkling, bright, bluey whiteness of the flames almost painful on the eyes. Everyone watched, waiting. A few people kept checking their watches. Any second... Lee Jordan whispered, two seats away from Harry. The flames inside the goblet turned suddenly red again. Sparks began to fly from it. Next moment, a tongue of flame shot into the air. A charred piece of parchment fluttered out of it. The whole room gasped. Dumbledore caught the piece of parchment and held it at arm's length so that he could read it by the light of the flames, which had turned back to blue-white. The champion for Durmstrang, he read in a strong, clear voice, will be Victor Crumb. No surprises there, yelled Ron as a storm of applause and cheering swept the hall. Harry saw Victor Crumb rise from the Slytherin table and slouch up toward Dumbledore. He turned right, walked along the staff table and disappeared through the door into the next chamber. Bravo, Victor Boom Karkaroff so loudly that everyone could hear him, even over all the applause. No, you had it in you! The clapping and chatting died down. Now everyone's attention was focused again on the goblet, which, seconds later, turned red once more. A second piece of parchment shot out of it, propelled by the flames. The champion for Beaubatons, said Dumbledore, is Fleur Delacour. It's her, Ron! Harry shouted as the girl who so resembled the Vila got gracefully to her feet, shook back her sheet of silvery blonde hair, and swept up between the Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff tables. Oh, look, they're all disappointed, Hermione said over the noise, nodding toward the remainder of the Beaubaton's party. Disappointed was a bit of an understatement, Harry thought. Two of the girls who had not been selected had dissolved into tears and were sobbing with their heads on their arms. When Fleur Delacour too had vanished into the side chamber, silence fell again. But this time, it was a silence so stiff with excitement you could almost taste it. The Hogwarts champion next. And the goblet of fire turned red once more. Sparks showered out of it. The tongue of flame shot high into the air and from its tip, Dumbledore pulled the third piece of parchment. The Hogwarts champion, he called, is Cedric Diggory. No, said Ron loudly, but nobody heard him except Harry. The uproar from the next table was too great. Every single Hufflepuff had jumped to his or her feet, screaming and stamping as Cedric made his way past them, grinning broadly, and headed off toward the chamber behind the teacher's table. Indeed, the applause for Cedric went on so long that it was some time before Dumbledore could make himself heard again. Excellent! Dumbledore called happily as at last the tumult died down. Well, we now have our three champions. I am sure I can count upon all of you, including the remaining students from Beaubaton and Durmstrang, to give your champions every ounce of support you can muster. By cheering your champion on, you will contribute in a very real... But Dumbledore suddenly stopped speaking, and it was apparent to everybody what had distracted him. The fire in the goblet had just turned red again. Sparks were flying out of it. A long flame shot suddenly into the air, and borne upon it was another piece of parchment. Automatically, it seemed, Dumbledore reached out a long hand and seized the parchment, then held it out and stared at the name written upon it. There was a long pause during which Dumbledore stared at the slip in his hands, and everyone in the room stared at Dumbledore. And then Dumbledore cleared his throat and read out, Harry Potter. <laughs>